Monitoring zebra mussel distribution and population abundance in lakes can be challenging for a number of reasons. Here, we will describe how a pair of scuba divers can implement two different double observer survey designs that account for imperfect detection and can be used to monitor newly infested lakes. Data sheets for each survey are available for download and printing. You can also find examples of our Google Form files used to submit data. If you choose to submit your data this way, you will need to make your own copies of the Google Forms. We also plan to develop vignettes that demonstrate how to analyze the data once it is collected. For more information on this project, visit our website. Both survey types use what is sometimes called a removal survey. In a removal survey, the first diver surveys a predefined area, marking any locations where she or he observes zebra mussels. The second diver then tries to detect additional mussels that were missed by the first diver. In this type of survey, the first observer can either mark or physically remove the mussels she or he observes. In our case, we marked locations where mussels were found and did not physically remove them. For both survey types, you will need the following. One to two 30 meter long lead line ropes marked every half meter, two to four long stakes that are at least 18 inches long, a foldable meter stick, clipboard, waterproof data sheets and pencils, and markers. For markers, we have found that bright survey flags work well in softer substrates and large, brightly painted washers work well on hard, rocky substrates. We collected transect data at the beginning of every transect for both surveys. This includes the transect number, observer initials, GPS waypoints at the start and end of transect line, compass bearings, time in minutes, seconds required to complete setup, the habitat survey and encounter survey, as well as clarity, measured as the farthest lead line marking you could read. We will first describe the double observer belt survey, followed by the double observer distance survey. In some instances, we use on-land footage for clarity. We conduct our survey along a belt transect that is one meter wide and up to 30 meters or about 100 feet long. The divers first lay out a 30 meter line using lead rope. The beginning of the rope is staked into the substrate to anchor its shallow end. We anchored our start points in depths of one to 1.5 meters of water along the shoreline when possible. Our ropes are marked every half meter. This allows divers to quickly record the distances along the length of the rope when a new muscle or cluster of muscles is seen. Once anchored, a diver then runs the transect out in a direction perpendicular to the shoreline. This allows us to cover a range of depths and ultimately evaluate if and how zebra mussel densities vary with depth. In some lakes, divers will reach the thermocline before the end of the 30 meter transect. In these cases, we stop the transect at the thermocline. The reduced visibility makes surveying exceptionally difficult. The transect line is then staked into the substrate at the end. Once the first line is placed, the diver lays out a parallel transect one meter away from the first. As one diver is laying out the second transect line, the other diver follows, collecting habitat data along the transect. These data can be used to determine the effects of habitat on both detectability and estimates of muscle density. We classified habitat by the dominant substrate type and recorded multiple types when habitats were interspersed in a qualitative fashion. Habitat types included mud, silt, sand, gravel, pebble, rock, or other. In addition, the diver recorded the presence or absence of plant cover using a scale of zero to four. Whenever there was a change in the dominant substrate type or plant presence, the diver recorded the new substrate, plant presence, depth, and the transect distance where the change occurred. Transect distance is measured as the distance from the start of the transect and is recorded to the nearest half meter. The segments formed by these changes can be used later to model the spatial variability in zebra mussel densities. We implement this survey by having the first diver search for zebra mussels between the parallel transect lines. Whenever the diver detects a zebra mussel or cluster of mussels, we record the number of mussels in the cluster, the length and width of the cluster to the nearest centimeter using the meter stick, and the distance from the transect start to the detection to the nearest centimeter using the markings on the lead line and meter stick. 
The primary diver then marks the detected zebra mussels so that the secondary diver will see them. Once the first diver has made some progress down the transect, the second diver follows. The secondary diver's job is to record any mussels that were not marked by the first diver and to collect the flagging and markers that were put out by the first diver. This diver also records the number of mussels in the cluster, the length and width of the cluster, and the distance along the transect for any new detections that were not observed by the first diver. The first diver is called the primary observer, and the second diver is referred to as the secondary observer. The primary observer marks the first detections. The secondary observer notes additional detections that were missed by the primary observer. Importantly, when surveying multiple transects, the divers should alternate roles, with one serving as the primary diver on odd-numbered transects and the secondary diver on even-numbered transects. The role of each diver should also be recorded for all transects on the transect data sheet. This information will make it possible to estimate separate detection probabilities for each diver. Here, we will describe how to implement a double observer distance sampling design. This is similar to previous removal design, but we will collect additional data that helps us to model how detection probabilities decrease as a function of distance from the transect line. Remember, in a removal survey, the first diver marks all locations where mussels were detected, and a second diver looks for additional mussels that were missed by the first diver. In the double observer distance sampling design, we survey using an approach similar to the previous survey type, primary and secondary divers alternating between transects. In addition, the divers collect information on how far away each detection is from the transect line. This information enables us to account for changes in detection with the distance from the transect line. To survey a transect using distance sampling, the divers first lay out a 30 meter line using leaded rope, similar to the belt survey. The beginning of the rope is staked into the substrate to prevent movement. Like the belt survey, transects are started in depths of around 1 to 1.5 meters, then run out perpendicular from the shoreline. Remember, if divers reach the thermocline before 30 meters, we end the transect due to reduced visibility. Double observer distance sampling requires only one leaded rope. While one diver is staking the end of the single transect line, the other diver begins by collecting habitat data along the transect. Again, we classified habitat by the dominant substrate type and recorded multiple types where habitats were interspersed. Habitat types include mud, silt, sand, gravel, pebble, rock, or other. The diver also records the presence or absence of plant cover using the same 0 to 4 scale. Whenever there is a change in the dominant substrate type or plant presence, the diver records the new substrate, plant presence, depth, and the transect distance where the change occurs. With traditional distance sampling, an important assumption is that divers are able to detect all mussels directly on the transect line. This assumption can be relaxed when data are collected by two observers, but doing so requires additional modeling assumptions and more complex statistical procedures. Therefore, it is critically important that the divers focus their attention on the transect line so that they're able to detect all or nearly all mussels that lie on and near the line. We implement the double observer distance survey by having the first diver swim over the transect line. Whenever the diver detects a zebra mussel or cluster of mussels up to one meter away from the transect line on either side, we record the number of mussels in the cluster, the transect distance, and the detection distance. Transect distance is the distance from the transect start to the detection. Detection distance is the perpendicular distance from the location of the detection to the transect line. The primary diver marks the detected zebra mussels so that the secondary diver will see them. After recording an observation, the diver returns directly to the transect line before resuming the survey. When analyzing the data, we assume that all detections are made while the diver is swimming along the transect and not as a result of a previous detection. We assume that detection distance represents how far away the muscle was from the observer when it was originally detected. Once the first diver has made some progress down the transect, the second diver follows. The secondary diver's job is to record any mussels that were not marked by the first diver and to collect the flagging and markers that were put out by the first diver. 
The secondary diver also records distance along the transect and perpendicular distance between the muscle and transect line for any new detections that were not observed by the first diver. The first diver is called the primary observer, and the second diver is referred to as the secondary observer. The primary observer marks first detections. The secondary observer notes additional detections that were missed by the primary observer. When surveying multiple transects, the divers should alternate roles, with one diver serving as the primary diver on odd-numbered transects and the secondary diver on even-numbered transects. The role of each diver should also be recorded for all transects on the transect data sheet. This information will make it possible to estimate separate detection probabilities for each diver. Thanks for watching. We hope you find this information helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Good luck.